Welcome back to my channel everyone. I'm Charles from Charles in Photography. I've been doing YouTube videos now for just over a year and until recently all my videos have been taken on my Samsung Galaxy S10 mobile phone. Now I love my phone. It does great videos in my office but when I'm out this places like this out and about with cloudy weather with the sun peeking in and out of clouds and all that this is where I found my phone let me down even though I use an app called Filmic Pro to actually control the scene much better, I find that I still can't stop it from going from bright to dark. So I get like a, a waving effect, a yo-yo effect, and it's very hard to control when I'm editing my videos. So around two months ago, I started researching little cameras just designed for vloggers. People like me do a lot of YouTube videos, but I was really looking on price, what I could get for my money. Now if money is not an option, there's a lot of cameras out there that will take better video, have more functions on there. But I really didn't want to spend too much money on a camera just to do my YouTube videos. So I settled on the Sony ZV-1 here, which I'm recording the video on now. And it's really been a great camera. Yes, it's not the perfect vlogging camera. And I don't think there is a perfect vlogging camera. They all have their good points and their bad points. This camera I bought for $1,100 about six weeks ago on special, and it came with the little Sony joystick here, which retails for an extra $200, and I picked the whole gear up for $1,100. So I'm really impressed. Now, I'm actually recording also this just off the inbuilt microphone. It's got a little cat's tail on there to stop the wind and all that, but I want to show you what this camera can do in its basic form. Most of the time, if I'm doing videos outside here, I've actually got a microphone hooked up to me so that there's less ambient sound and all that. Today, I just want to show you what the camera could do in its native form without having too much accessories on there. For me, I was looking at a camera not just to do my YouTube videos, but also because I've got a family, I didn't want to lug around my D500 when we're just going to the park or we're going into the city or when we're traveling. My D500 is a great camera, it takes great photos, but sometimes when I'm just out with my family, it's a big lunk of a camera to lug around. So I was looking at a very small camera to actually do all this because this camera is more than a vlogging camera. You can use it as a standalone camera and it shoots in RAW, it can shoot in JPEG. And when I go out and about, I actually shoot in RAW and in JPEG because if I'm doing a YouTube video taking photos, most of the photos I display are JPEG photos. But if I want to display the RAW file edited in Lightroom, I can do so. And this is one of the cool features in this camera. And there's not many cameras at this price point that does this. Also, I can actually control my white balance. So I can leave it on auto white balance, or I can choose the presets like you would do in your digital SLRs or mirrorless cameras, like auto white balance, sunny, shade, incandescent. All these settings are available in the camera. Some of the other features in there I won't go too much into because this is not a full review of this camera. I just wanted to talk today about why I bought the camera and the features that I use on the camera. Now the gimbal here is really good because you can take photos and movies. So if I'm taking photos and I want to take a quick movie, I can take a movie. But I can only do this if I'm outside the movie mode. If I'm in the movie mode like I am now, I can't do this. You have to be outside. You can choose like the manual setting, you can choose aperture priority, shutter priority, you can use intelligent auto and in those modes you can take photos and video. But if you're serious about your videos and you want to do them for YouTube or for Facebook then you're going to have to go into the movie mode and just shoot movies. And if you want to take photos then you get out of the movie mode, take your photos, then come back into the movie mode to take the rest of your videos and that's what I do. Now forgive the background noise, there's just a little street sweeper in the park here making a bit of sound. But now I'm going to show you how good 
the stabilization is on this camera because this is why I bought it. It has IBIS, that's in-body stabilization. Now some of the other vlogging cameras that I looked at, like the Sony A6400, doesn't have IBIS. So you've got to spend more to buy a lens that has vibration reduction on the lens and that actually increased my price. So that's why I didn't buy the Sony A6400, even though it was a much better camera. So now I'll show you what it looks like if I'm walking around with IBIS turned off, so that's the stabilization turned off, with the stabilization set to standard, and then with the stabilization set to active. And you'll notice that when we go from standard to active, it actually crops the video in. Now I shuffle a bit of the shakes, so if you don't shake too much, you can probably use the camera here in standard mode. But for me, the camera needs to be in active mode. So let's take a walk and I'll show you the differences. So this is testing steady shot in the off mode. So there's no vibration reduction, no IBIS. Now I have a bit of the shake, so it could move a little bit more than what a normal person would, but this gives you a good idea of using this camera without any stabilization at all. So now we're testing steady shot in standard mode. So just a small amount of vibration reduction, but we don't lose any width in the picture so the camera doesn't crop anything. So now we're in steady shot active and the camera crops in a little bit to get the maximum of the stabilization. Now this isn't good as a gimbal, but I find it actually works quite good. A little bit of shake, just a little bit. But remember, I get the shakes quite a bit, so somebody that doesn't suffer from shaking should get really good pictures from this. So now I'm in active mode. You can see I'm very close to the camera here and this is the distance I would be if I'm using my little gimbal and doing basically a talking head walking around video. Now watch what happens when I go away from active back down to standard. So there you go. Look at that. I'm at the same distance. But can you see there's a lot more view behind me? Now this does have a problem because if I'm walking around I can't have the camera in standard mode because I just shake too much. So you normally have to have it to active. And this is one of the downfalls of this camera. And now I'll show you an accessory that I bought so that I can have more view. I need the camera to be on active mode but you can see you can't see too much of the background. And this is why I bought this little beauty of a lens. It's a Ulitz wide angle lens adapter and it just screws onto the front of the camera here. And I'll quickly show you how it works. I'm not going to turn the video off. I'll just screw it on here and you'll see what happens. There you go. Look at that. I haven't moved one inch. I'm still at the same distance. Now you can see a lot more around me. This little Ulitz wide angle lens adapter only costs us $50. You can get it on Amazon, eBay, whatever. I'll put a link in the description below. I bought it on Amazon but I don't get any sort of kickbacks or whatever, any commission if you click on it. I just found I used Amazon because that was the quickest way to get the lens to me. If you're doing a lot of talking head videos with this Sony ZV-1 then this is definitely an attachment that you really want to have. For $50 it's like heaven on earth. When I'm in on my office doing a video, I don't need this lens because I can actually set the camera back a certain distance. But when I'm walking around, I'm stuck. I need the camera at arm's length. For me, this is the only downfall of this camera because the lens equates to a 24 to 70. So 24 mil, it's a bit tight. You'd really want to go down to 16 mils. And this is why this little lens is so good because that's what it does. It brings you back down to 16 mils, giving you more coverage. Now you've seen how good the Sony ZV-1 is of shooting video in daylight hours. I will show you now some video that I shot about a week ago when I went down to the Reckless Jetty around 10 o'clock at night to do a YouTube video of photographing the Milky Way in a built up area. Now this video was shot at ISO 6400. Now that's not an easy feat to do for such a small camera. And I've edited this video already and I was just amazed at how little noise this camera produced 
at ISO 6400. Now I have the Nikon D500 and I've tried taking video at ISO 6400 and it is super grainy. My D500 cost me around two and a half thousand dollars whereas this camera, the Sony ZV-1, only around eleven hundred dollars. So I just couldn't believe how good it was. So before I show you the video, this is a screenshot that I took. You can see it now. There's so little noise in the video. And here's the video now. Look at it. Look how clean it is. I will explain to you how I've actually set up my camera for this. And I'll take all this off first. You can see here, I've actually got a filter on here. This is a three-stop medium grad Nissi filter. So you've seen the videos that I took today and why I bought it because it takes great videos whether you're in intelligent mode whether you're shooting in like aperture priority shutter priority manual or whether you're in the dedicated movie mode which is where I take all my videos. The second reason why I bought the Sony ZV-1 is because it is a great camera to taking photos and I'm going to share now some photos that a few days ago when I came down here I walked around the lake and I took photos of toadstools, of flowers, of some birds and also of a lizard and a couple of these I shot in JPEG and in RAW and I'll show you the JPEG photo as well as the RAW file to show you that if you decide to edit your RAW files in a program like Adobe Lightroom Classic or any other program that you can edit RAW files in you'll see the amount of detail that you can get. So these are the reasons why I bought the Sony ZV-1 and these are some of the reasons why I think that if you're looking for a point and shoot, well I guess more than a point and shoot, a little compact camera, why the Sony ZV-1 is should definitely be a camera to have a serious look at because for $1100 I don't think you can get much better than this camera. Now if you found value in this video give me a thumbs up, I'd appreciate if you subscribe to my YouTube channel, stay safe. Enjoy the great outdoors, your photography, taking videos, and I'll see you next time.